people are even able to get into an MIT or Harvard, but they're not able to get into IITs. CVT is not just about uh, engineering. It opens a lot of avenues. Optimally, you should have between four to five entrance examinations. Have a very good connection with the alumni, with your seniors. What would you say uh, have been your observations in terms of the approach that students have had towards admissions? Try to meet as many people as possible who are actually in the education field rather than just trusting on this Google. I would not say getting to IIT Delhi should be your priority. Your priority should be, let's say you want to get into automobile engineering. First is desired program, then second is your institution. But usually students, what they do? They do it other way around. What would be your advice to students on how to really go about their admission strategy? Evaluate options where it opens more doors. One of those exams that are really, uh, you know, a lot of uh, buzz around it is the CUET. So the idea behind it, what uh, I believe is that uh, to sort of, uh, uh, you know, ensure that students can have one particular route to travel to different destinations. Even SRM has got its own entrance examinations, uh, which is SRM JWE. You kind of set your target. Like if you're really, uh, you know that you want to, you know, get into an IIT or an NIT or a triple IT, then I think JE mains is a, is a natural option for you, right? But, you know, not everyone can crack through those exams because the competition is so high. Uh, I have seen in my little experience that people are able, even able to get into an MIT or Harvard, but they're not able to get into IITs. That's the level of uh, craziness and the competition. Now, uh, apart from JW main student needs to, uh, you know, for SRM, I could say, uh, you see, we have got totally uh, more than 10 campuses, which accepts SRM JW. So through one exam, they can get into different campuses as well. And CVT, I already told you, through CVT, it's not just about uh, engineering. It opens a lot of avenues because now uh, NEP is also pushing the four-year undergraduate program in a big way. Phrases, keep your mind open. And try out the uh, the government supported examinations like CVT, JW mains, and then you can have maximum two or three. Don't go for too many options. Don't stick to one. You should optimally you should have between four to five entrance examinations. Spend a lot of time doing research, and then just look into the previous year question papers. I think it's a no. Uh, it's it's not that difficult to crack. It. We know that the number of applications to a BSc in India are far more. I mean, there are far more science students that are stepping out going for BSc programs as opposed to BTech programs. Do you see that number changing? Do you see that proportion changing? You can eventually get into a PhD without a master's as well. So if you're good at your, uh, let's say, your BTech or your four-year undergraduate program. We score uh, more than 70 or 80 uh, percentile or a seven or eight CGPA. Eventually, you can get directly into research. So, right, what, what is going to sort of happen is the people who are interested in R&D or interested in research or teaching field, they would just directly, uh, you know, get into a PhD program rather than spending their time in specialization. It's not just, uh, uh, you know, the line is erased between a BTEC and a BSc, but also I would go to another extent to say that uh, you know, someone who needs to do a specialization can can get the done in UG level itself. So then for research, they can go for a PhD. So eventually, like how already MPhil is gone, it's knocked out, right? So you will see a similar kind of uh, uh, thing happening at the master's level as well. But if we look at generally the number of students who want to pick up research, uh, do you see a lot of interest from, say, students who are taking admission to, into SRM at the undergraduate level? How many of them want to get into research and what, what do the numbers say? The people who are actually interested in research right from the time they join a program is hardly with 15 to 20 percent, uh, you know, because uh, at SRM, uh, you know, we focus uh, more on employability. Not that there is not enough research happening, but there are own challenges. We have got our own challenges in terms of, uh, you know, um, getting the uh, funding uh, from various agencies, not just government, not just uh, bodies like DST or DBT, but even uh, private ones have become, uh, uh, I would not say uh, stingy, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of regulations around it and they would rather be, uh, you know, more interested to give it to a startup or they're more interested in bringing in venture capitalists to grow the business rather than sort of investing in universities. I think that is where India is clearly having a problem in terms of the funding that goes into the R&D. There are so many potential avenues available, but there is lack of funding. So is that I true only for private or is, do, you, do you think that private universities are struggling a little more than public universities or is it the same across? See, on the whole, uh, if you see at a, at the Hawkeye view, there's a problem everywhere, be it public or the private uh, institutions, right? But whenever even that little bit of funding that is available, 
always a public institution is favored over uh, uh, you know a private institution because there is a notion that uh, uh, you know uh, unfortunately many people think that okay it's private uh, they are for profit organizations they make a lot of money and everything but ultimately you know uh, sustaining a good uh, research ecosystem uh, is an is a, is a costly affair so even students who the kind of students that come to srm uh, i have seen that most of the students more than 75% of students are more focused towards uh, employability but when you talk about research uh, i would confess that still this is a long long way to go and at srm at least we have got only around 15 to 20% of the people who are actually inter interested in research what would your advice be to students uh, as to how should they make the most of their srm years so yeah. that they are able to get the best graduation outcome for themselves have a very good connection with the alumni with your seniors and once you also become an alumni come back and take an active role because let's say you have your own business and you want to scale that business in a different country and let's say someone some alumni is actually in a, in a in a good role in that country you know you can sort of understand the market over a cup of coffee so this does not require any payment to a consultant and this has a lot of trust because you belong to the same alma mater and there is sort of a very uh, you know a, a good vibe going on between two individuals so please do make use of the mentor mentee system and be active participant of the alumni uh, engagement cell what would you say uh, have been your observations in terms of the approach that students have had towards admissions don't restrict your options to one that is what i'm trying to say evaluate options talk to people it's not just me there are literally hundreds of people and even more uh, you know wiser than me who has much more experience it's all about and there are so many platforms available keep your ears eyes and everything open try to meet as many people as possible who are actually in the education field rather than just you know uh, trusting on this google because sometimes too much of information uh, they say no ignorance is bliss and half baked knowledge is very dangerous so go to people who actually know their stuff very well this is my simple advice to these students what should you do in terms of your college selection and second maybe in terms of course selection there are total two important things right a good institution and the desired program so desired program lies with me as a student right it could be my my own desires of a program at a good institution sort of have a graph you know you should try to find the strike a balance between a, a good institution and a desirable program let's say you want to get into iit delhi right now i would not say getting to iit delhi should be your, your priority your priority should be let's say you want to get into automobile engineering that should be a priority what i'm trying to say is don't always go behind institution because institutional ranking like nirf nac trust me on this this is slightly uh, uh, you know overhyped uh, condition right so first is your desired program and then map the desired program where are these programs available because there are some program that is not uh, that are not there in even in iits not in nits Uh, are available in limited private institutions uh, right uh, uh, for example blockchain iot now i think couple of iits have come up with blockchain iot but uh, we were one of the first to start a specialization at btech level for blockchain and iot way back uh, in 2017 so now i think few more institutions are there so if you want to become a blockchain expert or an iot expert first write that program do some research what are the career avenues do some research uh, research on what kind of uh, demand is going to be there in the market so once it rings a bell with your thought process you feel okay this is what i want to do in my life then go for institution so then when you see this map see where your where uh, uh, you, let's say you you want to get into automobile but you are getting mechanical engineering or a power engineering that is little close to automobile because automobile has also got ev is coming a big way uh indian government is also a lot of buzz around hydrogen based uh, bio based fuels and everything so if you're an automobile engineer you're not getting automobile engineering try to go for mechanical engineering power engineering but don't go from automobile let's say you're getting something like uh, biomedical engineering or uh, or uh, civil engineering in iit delhi just go and go, don't go and fall for it so first is desired program then second is your institution but usually students what they do they do it other way around i need to get into X Y Z institution. I don't care what course it is because वहाँ uh -huh, placement अच्छा होता है. It doesn't happen that way because placement can happen either ways inside the institution, outside the institution. As long as you have the desire and it aligns with your passion, then you go for uh, institute. First is program, jotting down places and then taking up the entrance examination. And whatever comes, just enjoy it. Students are saying 
look, I'd rather go for a college which gives me better chances at placements rather than going to a college which might not be giving me chances at placements, but a, a better course. So let's say when you enter our institutions, maybe the curriculum looks very uh, nice and clean, right? But you also need to understand what happens after four years. So somewhere or the other student also needs to sort of go and take, there are so many free courses available, you know, like Kosra and um, uh, the Khans of the world. So there's so many uh, platforms available and some of the institutions, for example, in SRM, we have a, a, an MOU with uh, NASCOM, right? They have a platform for called Future Skills Platform. The teacher, uh, the professor might teach you the best things uh, in the world, you know, but how relevant it is to the job market makes a lot of difference. That's why many a place, students with nine CGPA, 95 percentage in their uh, BTEC is still not able to get a job because what they have studied is obsolete. It's no more relevant to the market. So it is responsibility of the student. I know they're young. Go for what is happening in the market kind of a trend. Try to get some kind of a certification from a third party, be it a government-based NPTEL MOOC platform or a third party uh, uh, platforms like Coursera and, and the likes. Go there and get all these things done. And I'm sure that, uh, you know, somewhere or the other, they will be able to convince recruiters to hire them. So don't just be, you know, stuck in your four walls classroom. Uh, it is essential, but it is not the only parameter to get a job. We see that there are a lot of students at the end of the academic year which don't find colleges. And there are a lot of colleges that don't find students, right, with, with, which have seats lying vacant. So what's your advice to the government uh, or, you know, the people who are making policies at the top level as to how should this problem be addressed? The government has been doing quite uh, good off late. Uh, they have been dormant in the last uh, 30 years, but uh, off late I'm seeing they are waking up to reality because no good institutions, be it IITs and uh, SRMs of the world, they are nowhere in terms of global rankings, right? Be it the, the higher education ranking or the QS ranking and all these places. Uh, there has been a lot of focus towards positioning India as a favorable higher education destination for the globe. On one side, students, they don't find colleges, institutions. Institutions are not able to, you know, fill their seats. Every year, uh, almost 400 to 500 institutions are shutting down. At the end of the day, mushrooming of institution uh, came up in a big way in early 2000s. And now it's high time that uh, you know, government has decided that all the institution will be formed as a cluster and they will be, uh, you know, made as one university. It's already like that. But now, so far, only, uh, you know, government institutions are allowed to affiliate colleges, right? Now, the way I feel that what I suggest government, I think I'm, government is already thinking about it. Let's also bring uh, privatization in terms of allowing good institutions, right? I'm not just talking about SRM. There are a lot of good institutions, private players who can do equally or even better job than government uh, universities in terms of affiliating colleges. Is there anyone hardly spending time with the student one-to-one -one counseling, not just a time of admission. I'm talking about between the program as they're going to the final year, how many training and placement sales are actually sitting and understanding what kind of difficulties they are facing in placements. Many institutions don't do that because they feel that we have to recruit students, give them a degree and push them into the market. Let's say even if they get the job to sustain in a good job, they need to have this people skill. Uh, they need to have a lot of empathy. They need to understand the uh, sense of belongingness should be there. These things come only when there are a lot of dialogues. Many institutions don't do this. What do you think is the advantage that private universities or the private education sector is going to offer in the short term as well as the long term to these students? as opposed to the public institutes? The first and foremost thing is, uh, uh, you know, the turnaround time when it comes to, uh, you know, reacting or responding. I would not call it reacting, responding to the market changes, right? Uh, we have a very uh, simple system. We have this uh, industry academia advisory board. Uh, we also have an international advisory board. So yearly, a uh, couple of times we meet and we deliberate what kind of uh, industry trends are coming up in the market. And based on that, we quickly infuse those uh, new emerging technology, be it technology or be it some, uh, some component, research component or, uh, or an employability attribute, design thinking. And there are various things that are coming up, uh, you know, in this uh, uh, global market. It is seen, uh, you know, religiously as a process to evolve the student from a, a, a graduate to a more about employability and, uh, you know, to ensure that they have the right skill sets in the market. 
Whereas in a government institution, let's say they have the best professors in the world, right? IITs and all these government institutions, public institution, they might even have better uh, faculties when, uh, compared to SRM or VIT. But again, the issue is what they teach is very important, right? Because it's not at how good they teach. It is, it is important how good they teach, but what is also important is how relevant is what they teach. That outcome is something that unfortunately government institution does not really uh, take it seriously, right? They are uh, they are happy, they, they, they are reluctant to change. They love status quo, right? They love things with the way they are. They are reluctant to change this. They don't want too many things happening at uh, too soon. Thank you, Manoj. Manoj Madhavan Kutti, thank you so much for being with us and uh, you know sharing your perspectives in a very, very candid manner. Please, this video ko like, share, and subscribe to channel. Ko subscribe karna bilkul mat Thanks for watching.